Hello everyone and welcome to video two of teaching my son to read and in this video you will learn that reading is not the same as learning the alphabet so if I wanted my son to read first don't teach the alphabet in order I did have to teach see, hear, say, write. So see the letter, hear the letter, say the sound and write. It's very important that say is about sound. So not the name of the letter, the sound. And for my son, the order for reading is different to the order of the alphabet. So if you want to help teach your child to read, follow this video and see the order that the letters should be shown in and sounded. So how the letter looks how it sounds, how you say the sound in the word and write it down. Are you ready to look at the order of those letters? To begin with, A-M-T were the first three letters I worked with. And I worked with the reading sound, not the name. A, M, and then I created word cards that were important for my son. So the words you use will be about your child, not about any word with that sound in. So for my son in our family, Anne, Mum, Terry. Words that mean something to the child. And remember, sounds. P O N C P O N K. And sometimes we have to really focus on that N sound. N. So the reading sound. So I would show my son the card and say P O N. And the game was for my son to repeat. So again, words you use relevant to people your son knows, objects in your house, anything in your garden that might have that sound. So for my son, Paul on cat. And I might also say cats because we have more than one. It's really important that because my son was dyslexic, he found it hard to do what we call differentiate between letters. So B and D were particularly hard. So when these letters were taught, I taught them separately to the others, B and D together. And I would ask my son to show me how to write B in the air. Start at the top, down, up a bit round. How to write D in the air. Start here, round, first, up and down. And for the reading sound, we did lots of B, 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 D. D, D, and think about how that sound is made in the way that your mouth moves and where your tongue is in your mouth and how that works with your teeth. So when you sound B, can you see what happened with my mouth there? B. So we would practice like fish. Ooh, look at the fish.
because sometimes my son needed to practice the way that the mouth works with the sound before hearing it. Buh. And my son liked to do a lot of and that's okay because you've got to get from to buh. And then with the D sound, the mouth is different. Together, duh, and open. Together, duh. And for the word that had the sound b and duh, I always used bed. This is because I wanted to show my son that at the start of the bed was the B, at the end of the bed was the D, and we could practice B, D, bed. And you also have beds in your home, so it's really useful to do lots of different cards and you can practice finding the beds in your house, putting the card on the bed, making the sounds, and actually looking at the top of your bed and the bottom of your bed and actually placing a B letter sound card at the top and a D at the bottom and it's all about playing games and trying to differentiate between that B and the D so that was an important part of learning to read. So which letters were next? Well next I taught the U sound, the S sound and the G sound so ah. Uh, and this is really important because I taught my son to do this with his body because he loves movement because he has ADHD and he loves connecting with the sounds even though he's dyslexic so he could go ah so sometimes we exaggerated how to make that sound so when we made the sound ah which I can do without moving sometimes my son did this ah and this is really lovely for up so you can teach up up, ah, uh. and for words, I chose words that he could go into different rooms in the house and find the objects. So I would give him three cards uh, and I would say, go and find the objects. For these words, he could find the cup. So cup, sun and dog. And if we look closely at this, we will see that in cup, we've already used the p sound and the k sound, and now we're teaching a. Uh. In the word sun, we've already used the a uh sound because we taught it before, we've just looked at the card, and the n sound. So now we're looking at s, and in dog, We've already used the D sound and the O sound. So it's really important that when you choose those words, you also think about what sounds have I previously learned. And remember, I might not be teaching these three sounds in one go. It might take me three weeks to teach one of those sounds. I'm showing you the order in which I use those sounds to help my son to read and I'm putting them together just to make it easier for you to go through the video and when we're looking at the letters of the alphabet don't teach it in the order of the alphabet you're wanting your son to read so Use the order of the letters that I've shown you on here. So if you're not sure, go back over the video again and make a note of the order those letters came in. So what were the next sounds I taught for reading? Well, H and I. H can be really difficult or easy, depending on how your son makes the sound. So again, because my son was uh, or is, because my son has, we can use any of those words, because my son has ADHD, 
and dyslexia. When I taught him to read, I used to teach him with movement as well as sound. So for H, I would go and this is really lovely if it's in winter time as well because you can actually look at how the breath you can almost see in the cold. So and I also taught my son to use his hand because he liked to move about a lot. Let's use that hand. Let's put the hand here under our chin and feel the sound. So sometimes when we were actually eating and the food was hot, we would go just to get those muscles moving. That's not all the same as the sound, but it allowed my son to use his mouth in a way that was like this and then understand that for H, he had to go like this. And then for I, particularly if your first language is not English, that I sound really needs to be practiced so that you can hear the difference between E and I. But for my son, it was a little bit easier because he liked going E. I, I, and make it fun. So for my son, the words for these sounds would be hat and bin because they're things I have around the house. And let's take a closer look at that. So for hat, we've already used the a and the t sound. A, t, hat. For bin, we've already used the b and the n sound. B, i, n, bin. And that's why it's easier to teach reading with the letters in this order. So what would I do next? So next, I would be looking at the letters F, L and E. Now for my son, I had to spend a long time on that F sound and I used the same way of using the hand as I did for the letter H. So for F, remember it doesn't have a sound from here. It sounds from here. So together, you're almost moving the sound through your teeth and you can tell there is no movement here. If you're saying F, that's wrong because you're actually using this part of a voice box and you don't need that voice box in the letter F. So your sound is and again and you can play a game of moving little objects, obviously tiny things that can move with the breath. When you're playing with somebody learning the sound and L, very important, the sound is L. So it's teaching that tongue to the top of the mouth. L and children love to go uh, and with my son we used to practice who could make that sound for the longest uh, and for the letter e the sound is eh, eh. <coughs> excuse me do you remember when we use the i sound e i said to you that is different to Eh. So practice that difference. I, eh. I, eh. And can you see how I use my son's movement? He had ADHD. It's easier for him to move. So with the I sound, I, moving up, I. And with the S sound, eh. 
air. So I just used to play games about moving a different way to try and remember that sound. So because you've looked at other letters, you have fan, leg and egg. And if you look a little bit closer, you will see that we've already used other sounds and that's what helps create the reading with the letters. And did you see there that I used a number? I've written eight out of 10. That means if you're looking at 10 words, aim for getting eight of those correct. And if eight of those are not correct, you stop there and continue to practice it. You don't go through the letters like I've just done today because I'm just showing you the order. And for me, because my son needed to learn less, sometimes it was two words together for that sound. And he had to be able to get those two words. If I used three words and he got two out of three, we would move on to the next sound. So remember that when you are looking at these sounds, you might be spending three or four weeks or longer on one sound. And this video is just showing you the order of the letters that I used from the alphabet. After F, L and E, I would teach the sounds of R, W, K. So remember, we're teaching sound R, R, K. So for the R sound, we looked at rat. For the Ooh, sound we practiced catching the W and letting it go ooh, 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 but not W yes so it's about putting your mouth together and letting it go ooh. so we did wind and that's a really useful sound at the end and to teach later when we look at how do we use the letters when they're with other letters creating a different sound? And for the K, I use the initial K sound because we knew somebody whose name was Kim and I also used a key a lot. And that's how you choose the word. So the reading sounds R, W, K. And what about this sound? I had to teach this sound on its own and make sure that my son understood it's like having two sounds together because the sound is kss. And this might be a totally new sound if you didn't begin your life with the English alphabet. So if you have a first language, this sound probably isn't a sound you would find in your alphabet. So spend a lot of time on it. Kss. And remember that the X sound very often at the end of a word, it does start the beginning of some of our words, but it has a different sound. So I use the Kss. So remember that when we're teaching reading, we teach X at the end of the word because it makes that k sound and that's the sound we want to teach. And yes, you will find X at the beginning of words. And I taught my son the word xylophone. Did you hear that sound? X makes a z sound when it is at the beginning of an English word. So xylophone. I taught xylophone because my son had a xylophone. Don't teach this hard word if your son doesn't use a xylophone. And moving on to the next letters, we looked at the sound V, Y, Z, V, Y, Z. So for the V sound, V, we used to practice a lot on how long could we keep that sound v, and feel like a reverberation in our mouth. And for the z sound, we talked a lot about the bees. And you can get these sounds into play. For us, we had a van. So van 
was a useful word to learn. Yo-yo, because this was many years ago when my son was young and we played with yo-yos. And for us, for the Z sounds zip, because we found those on our clothing. So let's have a quicker look. Yo-yo, so this is a yo-yo and we used to place it on our finger and um, move the yo-yo up and down as a game and play lots of tricks with it. If you don't have a yo-yo, your son doesn't understand what a yo-yo is, don't use that word, find another word. So zip, because there were lots of zips in my house. So zips on clothing and van because we had a van. If you haven't got a van, use a picture. Here's a picture of a van. You could actually play with pictures. You could take the words and ask your son to place it on the correct picture so that you're looking at understanding. And then finally, the J and the Q. So why do we have J and Q at the end of the way that I taught the alphabet? Well, this is because these letters aren't found in words that we read in English as often as the letters that I used at the very start of this video. So remember, this video is about the order I taught the letters in and you might take a long time with one letter. You're not teaching those letters together. You're starting here at the end with the J sound, J, and I use jam because there's lots of jam in my house. And for Q, I wanted the K sound because when I started my son learning to read, I wanted him to be able to learn the initial sounds. So we used Q, K, U, Q. And we used Q to support his reading and also practice playing in lots of different cues. The bus cue, the cue at the shop, how do you behave? What do you do? Um, how do you stand? Because my son has ADHD and is dyslexic. Teaching cue in play was as important for him as teaching the sound and the word to read. So good luck and look out for the next video. Bye now.